You all want to have a look at that uh, test review? So what I've got, um, and this is available on Moodle, is a list of topics that uh, could be on there. Uh, I'm saying could because, you know, I, I can't fit everything on there. So I just kind of give you a list. Uh, all right, so what we've got is simple stress and strain, both uh, axial and shear, finding the internal forces. Uh, when you've got multiple forces applied, uh, stress strain diagram, finding the modulus elasticity, proportional limit, and permanent set yielding. Strain hardening. Modulus to rigidity is just the shear modulus. That's an odd sounding name, perhaps, but it's uh, the shear modulus, is what it is. And um, you got Poisson's ratio, which gives you a relationship between lateral strain and axial strain. Axial deformation, delta SPL over AE. If you got multiple forces, you can do that. Statically indeterminate problems, temperature, stress and strain, axial loading, and then biaxial loading. Uh, the biaxial stuff is a state of stress at a given angle, the maximum and minimum stresses called the principal stresses, more circle, and then coming up with sketches. And then we got some vocabulary down there.
Let's see here. Let's open. Let's strike sign. Did you load another preview on uh, earlier today? Another exam one preview through your channel for strikes? Maybe, yeah. I don't know about today. Yeah, yeah it said that I just got an update today. Oh. And it was on my phone, so I didn't get to check it. Mm -hmm. I don't know about, I don't remember doing anything this morning. Having some issues here. Let's see what we got. We're going to go here. And then we're going to go here. And then we're going to open up this. Strengths. That's good. And we're going to save this. Save as. Right there. Oops. All right, there we go. So, um, so the first thing we want to do there, uh, this is just, and now, so that was the list of stuff that could be on this thing. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at here is the, um, just some different example problems. And as I said, don't take too much from this. These are just some old test problems I pulled out. So just to show you what they might look like. So be sure you're studying everything on the list. Um, so what you want to do here for this first one is you want to find the modulus of elasticity. Now notice that I don't say find E. E's on your formula sheet. You have to know that the modulus of elasticity is E. So you know, be aware of the terms and what they mean and, and that sort of thing. So that's one piece of advice that I'd give you. So to find this thing, what you got to do to find E is you got to stay on the linear portion of the graph. And I just assume that, um, you know, zero, zero is on the graph, which is a good assumption there. So that's one point on the graph. And then so I'm, that's right there. And then the other thing I want to do is pick a second point on the graph and find the slope. So I always do zero, zero. And then I just pick a point up on the graph that intersects some even place on the grid so I can get decent readings. And it looks like two. Um, megapascals and 0 0.004 for the strain. So I just uh, remember to include the 10 to the 6 for the megapascals. I divide it out and I get 500 megapascals for E. That's the slope of that line. Okay. So I've got my point shown on the graph and work through the calculations and get that. You all okay with that? And you'll accept either of those, right? 10 and 6 and E from your squares or 10 and Yeah, seven. it's not a big deal. I, you know, as long as it's clear, I, I don't have any real strong requirements for how you write out numbers. As long as they're right, it's fine. <laughs> okay. So you just get the slope of the line. And it has to be in the linear portion of the graph. You can't go up here and find E because you're not on the part of the graph that is a line. It's a straight line. It's on the curve. Yeah. What if we had gone like up to 2.5? Yeah. Still. Yeah, 2.5 is good. As long as you know, we have the part of the graph. Yeah, right. And you know, there might be slightly different answers on these. You know, I don't, I, I don't, that's no problem. So, but you know, much beyond 2.5, you're starting to curve, and that's no good. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, this next one, we want to find the deflection of point C after the load shown are applied. 
So we're going to start at the wall and work our way out to C. We're using a word that begins with D, so that means that delta is what that means. Okay, deflection is the word I used. So what I did on this thing was first found the reaction at the wall, and that's a thousand newtons. Okay, because I've got three thousand to the right and four thousand to the left. So R A is a thousand newtons to the right. And then I did sum of fx, set that equal to zero. And what I'm doing here is, you might remember we were going over this stuff at the beginning of the term. I want to find the internal force somewhere between A and B. So I just went ahead and drew a free body diagram of the left side of that assembly there, um, cutting anywhere between A and B. And my goal is to find the internal force. So if RA is pushing to the right with a thousand, the internal force between A and B pushes to the left with a thousand. And they're both pushing in on the bar, so that's compression. Okay. And then I do the same thing further out uh, between B and C, but I'm just doing it the easiest way I can come up with. So the easiest way there is to use that for the free body diagram and find the internal force. So I got 3,000 pulling. So I've got 3,000 at BC pulling back the other way. So that's 3,000 tension. So I go inside that bar and I find the internal forces is what I want to do. Okay. And I also want to find the areas. So I do both of those things. So I'm going to find delta and that's PL over AE. So I need P. I've got L right on the sketch. I just found A, and I'm given E, so I've got all the stuff I need. Okay. So once I've got this information here, what I do next is I just set up a table, P, L, A, E. I get the units on the left. I just plug everything in. So minus 1,000 for A, B, 0 0.241, 0 0.0007069, and 336 times 10 to the 6. I just plug in everything, and I'll get delta. Now that delta is what B does with respect to A. And then I do the same thing for B. So I should have had this written down, or between B and C, I should say. So this is BC over here. Okay. All right, so plus 3,000 for that. The compressive was negative because it's going to make the section shorter, but this section will become longer. It's in tension. So I plug in 3,000.376.0003142 and 336 times 10 to the 6. And I'll get delta BC, and that's plus. It's tension. 0 so that's what C does with respect to B. So what's going on here is that AB is getting a little bit shorter. BC is getting longer. So what I'm doing is I'm adding those two together to get the net effect of both. Okay. So the net effect is it gets a little bit longer, 0 .000, excuse me, 0 .00967. So it gets about a centimeter longer. Okay. I lost that uh, ink. I don't know where the heck that thing went. That's funny. Okay. So on that one, we found the internal forces, found the deltas for each section, then added the deltas together to get the cumulative effect as you work your way from A out to C. So we're good with that one. Okay. Okay, the next one there, um, we want to find the change in temperature. It's 12 degrees C. Found the area, 0 0.0024 found the strain due to temperature, took alpha 0 0.0005 times the 12 degrees C, I got 0 0.006. So that's, uh, that's epsilon, I think I said alpha, that's actually epsilon there, that's the strain. So I'm taking the alpha value times the change in temperature, I'm getting the strain. 
Now that bar fits snugly between the supports. So if the strain is 0 0.006 and the original length is 0.58 meters, that thing wants to lengthen out 0 0.00348 meters. But it can't, okay, because the walls are in the way. But the way I think about this is that it starts out an extra 0 0.00348 meters long. So in my mind, I just think of that as being a little bit extra long. Like so. And then what happens is the wall pushes it back to its original length. Okay, so that's how I think about this. So it's the wall's got to push it back 0 0.00348. So I've got delta is P L over A E, which is sigma L over E, because P over A is sigma, the stress. So if I solve for the stress, it's delta E over L. So I'm just rearranging the delta equals um, P L over A E equation, and I'm taking P over A as sigma, the stress. So I've got all the stuff to plug in, so I plug it in and I get the stress, okay? 16,800 newtons per square meter. Okay. Now, that's the stress. Um, this is axial loading. So that stress is P over A. The maximum shear is plus or minus P over 2A, because that's axial loading. It's caused by temperature, but it's just axial loading, like any other kind of axial loading. So tau max would be plus or minus the maximum normal stress divided by two. So the maximum shear in that bar is plus or minus 8,400, okay? Because tau max for axial loading is P over 2A, which is sigma max over two. Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, they're, they're typically, they look something like this. So uh, I'm thinking uh, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. We have uh, an hour. I'll get you a little bit more than an hour, hour and 15 minutes or something like that. This is just uh, axial deformation, or is this with multiple forces? This is axial, because there's just a load at, at either end. That's it. There's there's no multiple forces on this, so it's just axial. Okay. Right. Okay. This one here... Um, is this basic shear. We're loading, pulling the top across the bottom. Every, those planes are sliding one across the other. So A is the area that is attached, 0.28 by 0 0.17, 0 0.0476 square meters. L is the side that is not attached, 0.36. So the quick way to do it is shown in the upper right-hand corner. You can just take that PL over AE formula and just modify it a little bit. Instead of PL over AE, it's VL over AG. Now, changing P into V doesn't, it's not even, you know, it's not a big deal. It's probably been worth mentioning. They're just two different letters that mean load. So it doesn't change anything. The, the important thing is get E changed into G. Because okay, this is shear, it's not normal stress, so you're not going to use the modulus of elasticity, you're going to use the shear modulus. So instead of E, use G. Okay. And then just plug everything in, P, L, A and E, or G, A and G. And you get 0.05672 meters. Now you could just as well go through the process. Shear stress is V over A. G is shear stress over shear strain, so shear strain is tau over G. 
and then shear strain is delta over L, so the delta you want to find is the strain times the length. You get the same answer. A little quicker to do it in the way up in the upper right-hand corner there. Questions on it? Okay, there's a tank pushing down on three posts. Your goal here is to find uh, the load in CD and the change in length of CD. Now, yeah, you have to recognize this for what it is. It's statically indeterminate, okay? So it's important that you recognize it, that, that's, that it's got three unknowns all pushing in the y direction. So there's no x unknowns, so that takes some of fx out. You can't really use that. So now you're down to two equations of statics, but you got three unknowns, so you can't solve for those, which is statics. Okay? It's too much. So what you need to do there is use statics to do what you can do, and what you can do with statics is realize the sum of the three forces in the three posts is 180,000. You know, it's not really rocket science there, I guess. You know, you're just pushing down with 180,000, so the three posts got to push up with that amount. Now, the other thing you can do with statics is take a moment about C, and given the symmetry there, the load in AB is the load in EF. Okay. So that gets you down to 2 PAB plus PCB is 180,000. Okay. So that takes one of the unknowns out because AB and EF are the same. They're not separate. They're the same. So you're going to say 2 PAB is plus PCD is 180,000. So that's what you can get out of statics, what I've underlined down there at the bottom. Okay. But you still got one extra unknown. You got to come up with another way to involve the unknowns. And the way to do it is with strength materials. Okay. So the deal with strength of materials is you're using delta is PL over AE, and you're um, equating the deltas together. Now this one's pretty straightforward. What you've got is just a straight load pushing down on all three posts. So the delta for all of those posts are going to be the same. So you set the deltas equal. So delta AB is delta CD. So PAB times, so you can equate PL over AE for AB and CD. So PAB times its length, 0.96 divided by its area, 0 0.002827, is equal to PCD times its length divided by its area. The E's are in there too, but they're the same, so I just canceled them out. So based on that, I can come up with a, a relationship between the loads. Okay, so the deal is I, I set up the relationship with the deltas, but I end up with a relationship with the loads, which is what I want, because I want to figure out what the loads are. Okay. So PAB is PCD over three. So this gives me another little thing I can plug in. So I can take this and plug it in for PAB, okay? So I can come on over here into that statics equation I generated and put that in, like so. So I get 2 thirds PCD plus PCD is 180,000. So PCD is 108,000. So that's the load in PCD. And then to find delta, I just use PL over AE. Figure that out, okay? The PLA, the PAB is equal to PCD, but PAB be equal to. Uh, I, I did delta AB as delta CD. Yes. Yeah, okay. Did okay. you do that for EF instead of CD? Yes. I could have just okay. substituted. Everywhere you see an AB on this page, you could substitute EF. Okay. You know, it would, it would all come out fine. Wouldn't be any problem there. So it doesn't matter that CD is a different, or sorry, CD is a different uh, height. Well, it does. See, that, that goes, the fact that CD is a different height, see, that enters in here. 
Yeah, that doesn't change the statics, but it does change the strength. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. It doesn't change the statics in this problem, but it does change the strengths, yeah. All right. Right. Okay. Other questions on it? Well, so really you just go back and forth between statics and the strengths? Yeah, right. And then you solve the mm -hmm. potential. Yeah, you just got to do a little bit of two equations to unknown stuff, and you got to recognize it for what it is, you know. And and you, the, the the key there in the in the strengths is it's delta is PL over AE. That allows you to relate the load P to the geometry for delta, you know. Okay. And in this case, the geometry is real simple: delta AB is delta CD. But you had that one with a rotating rod and all that; they weren't the same, you know. So. That's one of the homeworks that you're referring to. Yeah, earlier. right. Yeah, that second second one with the bar that had a load on it and two hangers on it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Can you yeah. turn off Monday at all if we want to swing by and do a little brainstorm? Uh, Monday's really busy for me. The best bet Monday is, uh, let's see, there's right before class. And then I've got a lab class over in the CAD lab by A237. And it's, you know, usually I kind of yak at them for a while, then it's open lab after that. So maybe 10 to noon over in the CAD lab. What which time is, does your first class start? Is it before class? Right? It starts at 9. So before this class, I mean, like I'm free from uh, 2 to 3. Although, yeah, 2 to 3, which will be right before the test. Right, and then you have office hours on Tuesday. Yeah, right. From, yeah. Uh, right, yeah, that's right. Okay. And that was number 162 in the year It sounds right, yeah. Yeah. Had that bar ABCD. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Just number 162. Yeah. So, yeah, 162 is that indeterminate one that has the uneven deltas. Okay. That was the one where we had to draw a triangle and then... Yeah, yeah, right. Is that something we should practice for the test, or...? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't okay. be doing that, but, you know, just use some basic geometry, you know, and... and but, you know, there there was that... That was uh, proportional triangles, is what... Yeah, that was similar saying. triangles. Yeah, yeah, there you go, similar triangles. Yeah, even though it was rotating, we used similar triangles. That's a common thing to do. Okay. All right. Other questions? All right. Then we got a more circle one. Uh, supposed to find this stuff on plane CD. Now, you know, we've already done, gone through a couple of these. Um, you know, here's the solution. So A, B, and C. C is 42 comma 0. You got A is 12 negative 28. And B is 72 28. So with this more circle stuff, um, you know, the x plane is point A on the circle, and the y plane is point B, and the midpoint is the center of the circle. Just be sure that you remember that the shear is down positive. Okay, remember that. Okay, and now you you have to use trig, you know, and something like this will be on the test. I can tell you that. Okay. So just be ready to do this. Um, let's see. Now, what you do is you pull out right triangles out of the out of the circle and you work with them. Okay. So usually I make a triangle between A and the center. So there it is, right there. I'm outlining it right now, like so. And what I know is I can f find the two sides. The shear is 28. Now it's negative 28, but I don't really care about the sign. I'll just call that 28. That's the height there, or the length of that side. And then I take the difference between 12 and uh, the center, which is 42. So 42 minus 12 gets me 30 right there. So I'm, I'm finding the sides of that triangle is what I'm doing. Okay.
We're good with that. So once I got the sides of the triangle, I can take the square root of some of the squares and I can get the hypotenuse. And I can do an inverse tangent and get the angle. So I got a 43 degree angle in there and a hypotenuse of 41. So once you've got, the, and see what the hypotenuse of the triangles are, they're the, the radius for the circle. See, that's how that always works when you're doing this. So the radius of that circle is 41. And then once you've got the radius for the circle, you can find, I don't know what you call them, um, in AutoCAD, you use quadrant O snaps to get these things. So I would call them the cardinal points of the circle, whatever the heck you want to call them, X, Y, you know, the extreme sides, the whatever, okay? And those are the principal stresses, okay? So you can find sigma one, sigma two, and tau max in plane. So sigma one on this, I'm taking 42, and I'm adding 41 to it, and that's the radius, and I'm getting 83. Tau max, I'm getting plus or minus the radius. Okay. So that's the real basic use of the, the Moore circle, and you know that's the quick way to do it. Just I mean, you know, I don't know what quite I'm saying there, but it's you know it's pretty straight up. Just find the radius of the circle, which is the hypotenuse of that one triangle, and add, add and subtract it to the center point to get what you need. All right, so we got any questions on that so far? Okay. So T max is just the radius, and the, the stress yeah. was the radius plus the center. Yeah, plus or minus, yes. So tau max, the maximum shear, is plus or minus, is the radius, plus or minus. And the principal normal stresses are the center point plus or minus the radius. And that comes up. You always have to remember that circle is centered on y is zero, but x is not zero for the center of the circle. Okay, it's uh, x is uh, forty-two. Oh yeah. Okay. Can you use a little box to get those uh, initial coordinates of a, b, and c correct? Uh, so you'd have where the corners the shear of twenty-eight puts in the negative twenty-eight. Yeah. In the top left hand corner. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we good? So then if you do the two theta, then the theta is going to be the 58 degrees, right? Um, the 58 degrees, yeah. Okay, so what you're going to do now, another thing to remember about this stuff with the circle, the circle is based on the formula. The formula uses two theta angles, two thetas. Right, right. So, right. So, 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 yeah, so the real angle is 58, but on the circle, you got to double 58 and get 116. Right, and then we're going to go from, like, uh, BC to go 116 degrees counterclockwise and then draw a line. Yeah, we're going to start at point A because point A represents the vertical plane, see? Oh, okay. So point A on the circle represents that plane there. So you're starting at that plane and going counterclockwise 58. So, so when you double 58, you get 116. So that's where, where that comes from. It's 116 counterclockwise. So you go the same direction on the circle. And actually, that's why tau is positive down to keep those directional relationships the same. Okay. So I'm going to start at A, I'm going to rotate 116 and find the point that represents the state of stress on this plane here, see. In that plane A, so I see the shear stress is going to the corners. Mm -hmm. Is that technically, because I'm going from uh, the square to the uh, more circle, right? So I see that we're rotating 116. Yeah. Is that, do we also get that from the graph that those arrows going to the corner and then the uh, forces of uh, 12 MP 
is am I making any sense? I'm trying to understand more how we're going counterclockwise. Okay. Okay, we're we're going counterclockwise because this dimension is counterclockwise from the reference plane. Oh, okay. I mean that that's basically it. Perfect. Is that good? And then we're doubling it because yeah, because yeah. we're yeah we're doubling it because the circle is based on the two the two theta angles. Sure. Okay. The two theta is just a big one point eleven. I thought. Right. Yeah. Right. That's all. Right. Because the more circles derived from that big the formula twenty five or whatever the heck it is. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's yeah. So this is okay. So you know, all right. Now I, I don't mean to, you know. I mean, you just as well could have started at B and come this way, right? What would happen if you went B and and went clockwise twice times thirty-two? That'd be sixty-four, right? Could have done this too. You would have ended up at the same point. I mean, it all works out, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, but counterclockwise from B, you would have had to do this. That would get a little bit, you know. What I have drawn there is clockwise from B. That's the 32. So I don't know if I go counterclockwise from B. It'd be a pretty big angle. Couldn't you just go the 116 from that and draw a line across the whole circle? 116. Oh. Like oh, okay. Yeah, I guess you could. Yeah, you could go 116 this way. And then, but you'd have to remember to take this line and draw it the other direction. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that 116 from B counterclockwise? Is that point on the circle? Does it represent anything? Uh, well, 116 from B. Um, well, 116 from B counterclockwise. Let's see. What that is, I mean, it isn't something you want to mess with because it's getting too convoluted. There's simpler ways to get to what you want. But if you were to do that, that would actually be 58 from B, wouldn't it? So that'd be up here. That plane would be perpendicular to this plane, I guess. <laughs> I don't think we really want to get into this, but it would, you know. And, and so that's why if you shoot the line the other direction, you'll get on the line you want, I guess. But let's not, yeah, let's not even go there. Yeah, I guess uh, looking at like the key color Oh. You know, like the lines are going all the way across. Yeah, I think I might have shot the, yeah, the reason there were lines going across is once I had the uh, plane CD, yeah, I wanted to find the stress on that plane that was perpendicular to it because I was doing a, a little element. I was drawing that up, I think. I think that's what I was doing. So, uh, yeah, so if to do that, I wanted this, this line too, coming up that way. Okay. So we're doing all right? Yeah. Okay. If point A is always from the vertical and point B is from the Correct. horizontal. Point A is the vertical plane, point B is always the horizontal plane. All right. Doing all right with that. Good. Okay. Now, what you got to do there is you got to figure out that triangle down below the theta or the sigma axis there. We got this 43 degree angle right here. Right there. We found that when we were working with point A there. And now we're going to rotate 116. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that 116, which we're rotating in this case, and we're going to go, okay, I'm going to rotate around, but I've already used it up 43. So what's that angle for that triangle that I'm going to have? So 116 minus 43, what that is is 73, okay? So that's where that angle for the triangle comes from, 73. Okay. 
and every situation is different. There's no standard way to calculate that angle. You got just got to look at it and kind of figure out well, what, what's the ang vertex angle on that triangle. Okay. In this case, the 116 is the total, and 43 is required to get you down to the horizontal axis. So that leaves 73 more. So come on around. Okay. Okay, so we got a triangle down there with a hypotenuse of 41 and a vertex angle of 73. And remember that the vertex is at an x value of 42. Okay. So I just do the basic trig first, cosine 73 times the hypotenuse. That gets me 12. That's the value right here. So I'm going to take 42, where I'm starting, minus the 12, that gets me 30. That's the coordinate value right there. Okay. So x down there is 30. I'm at 42 at the center, where the vertex of that triangle's at. And I'm going back 30, okay? So 30 is the x, okay, for this point right here. And then I've got sine 73 times 41, and that gets me 39.2. That's the y value. It's positive, because positive is down. And I don't have to do any additions to it, because my y value of the center point is zero, okay? So that coordinate of that point is 30, 39.2. So that's the values of sigma and tau for plane CD on the element. Y'all okay with that? Okay. Yeah, we got one other here, and that was to find the stresses on plane AB. Oh, just normal stress on this one, right? So just, you know, and again, please don't, if if I just give you a plane and say find the normal and shear stress on it, just plug the angle into the equation and do it. You know, just I, I, I just hate it when people start making it much more complicated than it is. Okay, if you're given a plane, plug the angles in and find the stress, and that would go for normal stress as I'm doing here. It would also go for shear stress. Just now, if I don't give you the angle and I say what's the biggest stress in the element, then you got to find the angle first. And then once you've found it, you got to add 45 to get to the shear plane, right? So that's what you got to do on the ones where you're finding the maximum normal stress in shear. But if you're just told find the stress on this plane, just plug the angles into the formula. That's all there is to it. Okay. And then I think I also asked you if this stress were to cause failure on that plane, what would it look like? It would look like what I'm showing you there. It would split on the plane and pull apart because that's a positive tensile failure. Okay. All right. Negative tensile failure would be this way instead. No. Negative. No negative. negative would be compressive. compressive. <laughs> yeah. So okay. if it was a compressive failure, well, it would I was trying to think of that shear where you had a shear going backwards. As well. Yeah, shears are, think of drawn couples. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Count, clockwise for negative, counterclockwise for positive, and then just look what each side would do with respect to the other. Okay. For a biaxle, you always take the angle from the vertical. Right. That's just a convention because they built the equations this way. You know, that's all there is to it. At some point, someone decided. They would use that vertical plane as a reference and rotate off of it counterclockwise. Okay. So that's all there is to it. So you always use that angle, that plane, I'm sorry, as your reference. And positive is always counterclockwise. That's just how it is. So the proper angle to use there is 48. And when you double it, it's 96 in the equations.
Is there one question that's worth following on the right? It says more is for the third one too. Yeah, those are just old tests. I, you know, if I have more questions, they're not worth, you know. Uh, yeah, but Morris, Morris is a little bit because there's a lot of steps in it, you know. Is that the most time consuming one, the Morris? Uh, probably. Uh, Seems kind of funny because the Morris, I mean, if you're really familiar with it, you should be able to just start to do it in like. Well, yeah, maybe a couple minutes, but yeah, by the time you do the triangles, it'd take a little while. I mean, the indeterminate stuff takes a while because you get multiple equations of unknowns. I mean, I don't know, it just depends, I guess, on what you're dealing with. But yeah, think about your time. Don't rush, but like on that shear stuff, like the good example would be that shear equation. Just do VL over AG, you know, the, that little problem I had. You know, there's there's two ways to do. I, I don't know. We're just talking about time and all that. This one. Oh, the second. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the the way in the right hand corner is the way to go because it's quick. You know. Yeah. Now you could do it the way below, but it'll take you more time. Yeah. Our, our on Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Monday from uh, three to four fifteen. Is there anything we should memorize besides the book out? There's no formula to memorize, right? No, I'll give you the blue formula yeah. sheet. Bring a non-programmable calculator. And uh, bring a photo ID. I mean, some of you I know, but some of you I don't. So just do that if you would. Okay. But Vogue was the only thing that's not on the formula sheet, right? Yeah, right. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Generally, yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't either. I guess that might be the answer I give. I can't okay. think of anything else. <laughs> okay. All right.